Okay. Hi, everybody. Oh, my gosh. That really shows what a huge mess my deck is. Look, you guys can see everything. <laughs> Let me just clean some of this up while I'm waiting for you guys to jump on. And by cleaning it up, I just mean pushing it out of view. Well, you can still see some of it. Hi, Selma. Hi, Laura. Ooh, you guys almost caught a glimpse of some new stamps. Got to move those out of the way. You guys cannot see those. All right. That's a little better. It's a little more peeling. Everybody's having a great weekend. Hi, Sonia. Welcome. Hi, Maria. Hi, Nancy. You'll have to forgive me because I'm filming from my phone. My iPad is almost dead, so I have it charging, and I, I won't be here too long. Hi, Valerie. Yes, we have lots of lots of pretties. Lots of pretties. What? I didn't go to Hobby Lobby. Now I must go. It bums me out the Hobby Lobby's closed on Sundays. <laughs> but I get it. I understand it. I can respect that. Didn't I do? Oh, I did do some foiling this weekend. Okay, so while you guys, it looks like most everybody's on here. We have 21 people watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Miss Leah is taking a shower. She'll be down in just shortly. Um, but yeah, so this weekend I did film a lot of videos. There is an amazing new release from the Not Too Shabby Shop. Um, so I'm super excited to show you guys that. I also have all of my cards done for March for the Blue Night Rubber Stamps um, videos. So those are always every Thursday. Um, yeah. Um, so I wanted to tell you guys, if you were interested in these mermaid sequin fabrics, they were on sale at Michael's. I don't know if they still are or not, but run, run. It is $5 for this roll of beautiful mermaid sequins. And if you're not familiar with my videos, these have replaced shaker cards in my life because they are so much easier to do and way more fun. But you can see there the sequins change colors once you flip them. Um, and these are at Michael's. And again, it was $5 a roll, no coupon needed. Look at all this gorgeousness. So I got a few more rolls. I got a lot at Christmas time. And um, you want to thank Tracy Schultz because she's the one that gave me the heads up about it. Um, and Tracy just did a beautiful card with um, a little mug with that. And then this is the other one I got. And the name of it is Celebrate It Reversible Sequin Ribbon. So if you're going to try to order it online, that's the name of it. This one is rainbow sequins, all of the goodies. And then on the back side, it's just plain silver. So pretty. So I went to Joanne's today, and Joanne sells a piece of fabric. It's the exact same fabric, um, and it's $5 for one piece of fabric. So if you can get the rolls, the rolls have one yard um, in there. So that's going to last quite a bit of time if you're making the cards. So get these at Michael's. I There's a whole bunch of colors. Um, those are the two I picked up because, again, I did pick up a lot during Christmas uh, when they first came out. Okay. 
Um, and I went over today and poked around Joanne's. Honestly, there wasn't too much there for me to really get. Um, I will say I was on the fence with picking up a foil quill, like the manual one. I have the one that goes in my silhouette machine. I just haven't played around enough with it yet. It's just too slow for me. But I did pick up some of the hot foil because, you know, this hot foil can be used in your hot foil machines. So it was on sale for $6 a roll. So I picked up this emerald green and this aqua. It's like a matte color so you know i have purple already i just pick up a roll at a time when i see it on sale but if you are interested in hot foiling with the foil quill or picking up hot foil all of the hot foil related to the foil quill is on sale you can use that hot foil in your spellbinders glimmer machine you can use it in your foil you can use it in your gemini foil press just remember it's a higher heat thing so um you know for six dollars that's a really good deal and then i use my coupon my, my joanne's coupon coupon and i picked up this uh foil which is always sold out at mine and i was going to order it online but now they had it in stock so i was able to use my 50 percent off coupon off one regular priced item And it is gold with these itty bitty stars. Can you guys see that? Let's see here, focus camera. There we go. It's like star confetti. It's very, very pretty holographic. So this is regular mink foil. This is toner foil. This is the foil you're going to use in your um, laminator or your mink machine. This is not hot foil the other foil so two different types of foils there we have regular foil and hot foil cannot or should not i should say interchange the two because you will be disappointed so hot foiling mink foiling or toner foiling i saw somebody jump on there and say hi who was that i missed it hi diane hi mona lisa oh and so hobby lobby is apparently having a sale i will have to check that out this week um, so those are just some things I picked up. I know it's not a lot. I'm anxiously waiting. The stamp show is coming at the end of March to, um, Allentown. So, 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 so these are the videos I recorded yesterday. So these will be coming out this week. Um, what I wanted to show you guys is you guys asked for the stamp set. This is the multi-step honey bunny stamp set and it comes with a larger rabbit a smaller rabbit these gerber flowers beautiful sentiments of course some grass accents there's a little tiny shadow outline here he is of a little baby rabbit oh yeah valerie i know somebody would have went out and bought all kinds of foil and then said it doesn't work <laughs> Um, so I made a couple videos because you guys asked. Oh, and I just want to put a public service announcement out there. The Mod Squad challenge for this week is being um, postponed because we're having problems with the website. Our posts um, keep coming and going. We don't know what's wrong with it. So the moderators are working on that. So there is no Mod Squad challenge this week. So check back next week for those of you that participate. And if you don't participate... You might want to look into it because it's completely free. Hi, Patty. All you do is you just submit a card based on whatever their theme requirements are. And then they randomly pick a winner and you can win $25 to whoever the um, sponsor is that week. So Gina K is a sponsor. Kitchen Sink Stamps is a sponsor. Stamplerations is a sponsor. So many different stamp companies um, go on there. Hi, Connie. Hi, Susan. So I made this card with the larger bunny and the little bunny and then i put some grass under there and then i um stenciled with the cloud stencil and then from some bunny who loves you and put it on some brown doodle bug cardstock there yes that christine it is uh laminator uh, mink uh toner foil it is not hot foil for that one the other two are hot foils and then this one i practiced with the flowers did them on a yellow color and then just put hello spring nice bright cheerful card simple to do this one's probably my favorite and it was the easiest to do 
All I did was took the first layer of the rabbit. I did not use any of the other layers and just stamped them out in some bright, colorful colors, um, in inks. And then I put some more of that doodle bug paper in the in the background there. I put a little gold mat behind it. And I, isn't it cute? Hi, Joanne. So you don't have to use all of it um you know all the layers when you have a stamp set and then here's one i was working on this is just going to be a simple note card i was just playing around with the different colors of the flowers um i was really you'll see in the video i was really panicking about how the layers look but now that i look at it i don't think it's too bad i think it came out okay so i just want to just tell you guys there are videos going for that so the videos for Blue Night Rubber stamps are done. The videos are almost done for the Not Too Shabby Shop new release, which is going to come out next week. And I did these kitchen sink stamps. So I also did some foiling. Um, I'll just show you one little piece here. So I ran out of address labels. And so I went to my printer to print them. And when I went to print them... My regular printer was out of um, color ink. I don't order color ink. So then I was like, okay, well, I'll just use my brother, which is a laser printer. And when I was printing the labels, I just cut my address off of there. But when I print the labels, you know, they're plain black. Can you guys see that? So after I was done printing them and they were plain black, I ran them through my mink foiling machine with some scraps of foil. I didn't even really use any good foil. I just pulled out scraps out of the box. And now my address labels and Hello Kitty are foiled. Isn't that cute? So fun times there. Hi, Kiki. And that's all I really have, guys. I don't have too much. Um, I was going to do a quick, we can do a quick um, Perfect Pearls demonstration. You guys have been asking me questions about it since that was the Mod Squad Challenge last week. I did a not too shabby note card on them. This is by no means a um, invention I came up with. I learned it from Jennifer McGuire. But somebody, one of the winners I picked for last week came up, um, submitted her card this way. And I wanted to bring it to you guys' attention. This is really easy and fun to, to do. All right, so I'm going to cut this down. This is Nina Solar White, 80 pound. I'm going to cut it down to... Oh, five and a quarter by four. Oh, no problem. I'm glad you got it, Patty. All right, so I'm going to cut that down. I am... I look for an easy stamp here. This is a retired stamp set, which I don't know why they retired it because it has beautiful fonts, but I guess they didn't sell enough of it. This is from Stampin' Up. Speaking of Stampin' Up, for those of you who have not placed any orders with the um, celebration that's going on, I am short, I think, $134 in order. So if you are thinking about it um, and you don't have a demonstrator, I would appreciate if you wanted to pick me as your demonstrator. Um, I will link my Stampin' Up! site for you. But they, they're they great. It's a great time because you get a lot of free papers and things um, with that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to... I'm going to cheat and use a stencil. And you want a pretty solid stencil, like a big area stencil. You can tape this off. But I know I have a big circle stencil, and that's what I want to use. Hold, please. 
I have a cow stencil. I have a cowboy boot stencil. I have a castle. And there's my circle. This is like how I'm going to order soon. Sorry, it's fine. It's fine. Where'd you get the plastic piece you got the stamps on? Oh, I I save when I open my stamps. This is just packaging. And I cut it and I stuck my labels and stuck my stamps on there. And then I stick it in this little bag. So it's what you would normally throw away from stamp packaging. Okay. Now, someone did comment to use... The anti-static tool before doing anything with Perfect Pearl. So I am going to do that. So thank you guys for commenting. See, when you guys comment on the videos, I read them. And then I'm going to take the outer part of the stencil. Oh, this might be a little too big. We might have to go a little smaller here. Eh, Let's just try it out. I will do tape on this side. Just going to post it tape. smaller sentiment for that one but that's okay all right all i'm doing is blocking off with post-it tape the center here okay now what we're going to do is in the center of the tape and the center of our little circle here we're gonna put our versamark ink all over that I really want to make sure you get that as close as you can all over the card, the center, as much as you can. Oh, I know what I'll use. We'll use fairies because fairies look good with everything. Okay, so let me move that one out of the way. I'm going to start with this one. And then I'm going to use one of my little brushes that come with the Perfect Pearls. They come with the, well, they used to come with them. Um, I don't know if they still do or not. The little four packs. And I think I will do some green. And I'm going to do like an ombre effect. Ombre. I can't open it. All right, this one is called Sour Apple. I know one of the colors I used in the last video is retired. I'm sorry. Um, this one's called Forever Green. I just use what's in my stash. I don't throw products away because they're retired. Um, so use what you have. And then this one is called Green Patina. So we have three different colors of green here. Hopefully they'll go okay light to darkest. So I'm just going to start with the green apple or sour apple. Let's start here. Oh, that's a super light green. Then I'm going to move on to this middle green. And then the last green. That has a little bit, oops, of gold in it. Way too much there. All right, so then once we have all of our colors down, we don't want Nance to drop them all over the table, which I did do last week. Yes, I admit it. Okay. 
I just want to make sure it's covered all the way up to the corners. And then you want to grab a stamp. Trying to find a segment that I would like. Ooh, that's barely going to fit. Okay. Just for demonstration purposes here. Using my VersaFine Claire, and hopefully this will work out okay. Barely gonna. I'm gonna take my little border tape off of here. I know my sentiment's gonna hang out a little bit, but it's okay. We'll survive. Anywhere you have excess perfect pearls outside of there should just brush right off. In fact, let me take my big brush and there we go. Okay. Now I'm going to stamp my sentiment right over the center there. I should have used my Misty in case I needed to ink it more. Hi, Sally. Hi, Linda. Okay. So now we're just going to set this aside just to give the ink a second to set. It actually came out way better than I expected it. Come on. All right. And while we're waiting for that, we're going to work on this one. And for this one, I'm going to be a little more... Let's do... I don't... Let's see if we can get a rainbow kind of thing going on here. Why not? Okay, this is called Merriment Red. By the way, for those of you who asked what was on my nails, this is pretty much the same stuff right here. What my um, Tina did for me is she painted my nails in a regular pink, like a fuchsia nail polish, which is what I normally get. And then she put top coat on. And for the top coat, I always do gel. When we did the top coat, I only dried it for 10 seconds instead of the full 30 seconds in the lamp. And then she took this interference powder and rubbed it over my nails. So the... Um, top coat is still a little sticky so the powder stuck right to it and then once she rubbed it in it gave my nails this interference on top of the future a fuchsia nail polish and then she put top coat on it and cured it so that's why my nails look almost kind of like very shiny chromey looking it's that interference powder on there so thanks tina i am just going through different colors here and putting them all over my little circle here. Use what you have. Oh, that circle moved a little bit. We actually don't need this border anymore. We can take that off. Now, someone also corrected me. If you're using the Perfect Medium ink, which is super sticky, um, it supposedly has a component in the ink that will lock in your um, Perfect Pearls. I like to spray mine um, to lock them in. That's what Tim Holtz does on his. But if you use the Perfect Medium instead of Versamark, supposedly you don't need to do that extra step of spraying them and locking them in. They will... They will be fine. 
All right, we're almost to the end here. There's some super light colors. Uh-oh. This one is not on correctly and has exploded out of the container. Maybe we'll just pick that up. All right, so we have our little rainbow going on here. We can dust off any excess. Or smack everything around on the desk. All right, I could have put more Versamark on there. But anyway, you guys get the idea. Okay, now we want to stamp something beautiful on here. And I said fairies. Where are the fairies? Silicone stamps. I loathe silicone stamps. Pretty good. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take an embossing folder. I have a 3D embossing folder here. This is from We Are Memory Keepers. I don't remember which sandwich to use, but we will find out here shortly. I think it's just one bottom plate and then the milky plate when you're using the 3D folders. So you have your bottom plate, the 3D folder, and then I think it's just the milky shim. That was not enough pressure. Let me check it. Nope. Let's do the magnetic plate and the milk. I know it's not both the top and the bottom plate because that's too much pressure. Oh, come on, Nance. Maybe it is the top and bottom plate. Oh, that sounds awful. Don't worry. I got the spare Gemini in the box over there. <laughs> okay, I guess that is it. But that just seemed super thick. All right, so this is why we want to make sure our ink is completely dry. I probably should have heat set it, but it didn't come out too bad. So now we have this perfect pearls kind of center and then we have our sentiment on there and then by running it through the embossing folder we have this cool dimension to it so someone who's not a stamper is going to wonder how did you get it to stamp so beautifully 
without anything getting messed up. So let's also do it with, let me heat set this one because this one's still wet. Yeah, I think you're right. On black paper, it really stands out. And I wasn't really planning on doing this demo. I just kind of rushed through it. So I'm going to clean the inside of my embossing powder because some of the embossing folder because some of my ink transferred. And if, you, if you're ever worried about that, you can just put a piece of paper over top to catch that. But it's this VersaFine Clair ink. It's just, it stays wet a little longer. So we're going to do that again. And apparently it is just a top plate and a bottom plate when you're using these 3D folders. Some of them, the ultra thick ones, honestly, guys, I use my old Sizzix on that because I don't want to break with the ultra thick folders you can hear that struggling to take that I'm telling you that thing is about to retire so yeah it definitely looks better if this were on black paper because the perfect pearls do pop but you should be able to do that with any kind of mica powders you have. And then you put them on a card front and you're done. So again, I did not come up with this idea. I know we've been playing around a lot with the Perfect Pearls. This I picked up off of a Jennifer McGuire video many, many, many years ago. Um, <laughs> right, Kiki? We're just not as young as we used to be. Um, but it does look pretty cool when someone gets it. And I just like doing the center there so it highlights your sentiment. But you could do the whole paper. In fact, um, when I was at the ink pad in New York City, which they moved, by the way, um, they um, they were doing this with the, what do you call those? The shimmers? Opal polishes. So here is the opal polish. This is blushed, which goes from this orangey color to a pinky color. And this dries in no time at all. This is very quick to dry. And I'm using very cheap black cardstock here. The ink pad did move. They're in process of moving now. They sent out an email, so before you head on out to New York City, just check um, their website. Um, if you're not a member, she does a lot of notifications on Facebook that you can pick that up. Okay, just trying to give this an even layer here. And I'm just going to wipe my desk down while we give that a second to dry, and it will dry very, very quickly. You do want to clean this up quickly because once this is dry, it's difficult to get off. It's a really good product. And you can see already all of that shine and color. And it went from this orange color to this peachy pink color. I'm just going to put the heat tool on it real quick. There you can see, completely dry. Now let's run this through. And then I'll show you what she was doing.
So now we have this cool. It almost looks like you use metallic cardstock, and all we did was use really cheapy paper. And then what she would do is go in with a second coat with a different color that I cannot open. Kiki, you'll come open this for me. Okay, never mind. We're not using that one. Okay, this one I think turns like a greenish color. I don't know if it'll show up against this pink. Now my problem is I'm always heavy handed with these and you're supposed to just be really light. So you're supposed to just dab it in there and then scrape off all of the excess onto the side there and very lightly lightly glaze over the top and I don't know how much you guys can see that second color sit on the top there but it really adds dimension if you're looking for backgrounds this is a really cool easy way to do backgrounds and then like I said it pops so people that get it are like what how did you do that you could do this also with the perfect pearls just Cover your whole piece of paper in the Versamark ink or your bossing ink or your uh, perfect medium ink, whatever you want to use. And then put your perfect pearls over it. Oh, can you guys see the second color? You can see some how much I glopped over there. More visible this way, I think. There we go. Oh, it's how Linda did all her um, Christmas cards. Think of how cool this would be if you would die cut this like circle, like Christmas ornaments. That'd be cool. So there's a lot of embossing folders out there that are really cool and pretty and we don't take advantage of them. And the, you know, using the perfect pearls or using these opal polishes, really cool way to do that. This is called opal polish. This is from a company called cosmic shimmer and i will try to find that and link that for you guys so um, this one goes from green when it's on white paper it's yellow let me find a scrap piece of paper and i showed them a little while ago i think before christmas so when it's on white paper it's yellow but when you put it on black paper it has an interference color in it really cannot get that one open this one goes from orange to peach pink oh it's all dried out already but when it's on black paper it's a completely different color so you get two colors in one these are great especially because they're very pastel looking so if you're doing any kind of like easter cards so there you can see what they look like on white paper very pastel very shiny um they have this metallic look to them and then when you put them on black paper they completely change color so the um, peach turns into this kind of pinky color and then the yellow turns into this vibrant lime green you see that there that's the yellow on top so they're fun to play with but this company makes a whole bunch um, in glittered colors. Um, they're really fun to play with. And I like them because unlike Nouveau Paste, these do not dry out. They stay very moist. Moist. Everybody's cringing now. Um, I really wish I could get this one open. Oh, there we go. Finally. I'll show you this one on the back side here. So this one is really pretty. This is my favorite. It goes from blue to purple. I will say there is a slight odor. It does smell like paint or glue, one of those kinds of things. So there is a slight odor. So if you're sensitive to the odors, this does have a slight odor. So there it is, light blue on white paper. And then when we put it on the textured black paper. Oh, I love it. It's so pretty. 
fudges, darling. Here you can see that it turns purple. So there you can see in the thicker areas, it's still blue. And in the lighter areas, it's purple. So those are called opal polishes. Perfect pearls, Connie, are mica powders. Oh, yeah, it's definitely not as strong of a smell as alcohol inks. Alcohol inks do have a distinct odor. But you can, like I said, do this same thing with Perfect Pearls. It does look better on black than it does on white. Perfect Pearls are mica powders. And you can stamp on them, you can make designs, you can lift ink from them. Brutus Monroe had his set of powders, but I think he discontinued them. But if you have a couple of the Brutus Monroe mica powders, oh, you know what? I'm going to use the other ones. I have some color art ones, and I haven't used those in a while. I like the color art ones because they're water activated. You can, you can watercolor with the color art ones. Primary elements, they're called. They'll work in the same way. Some t what's the other company? The uh, pigments. There's a big, big, big brand of the pigments that artists use. I can't think of the name right now. So any kind of mica powders you have will work. So this is a different company. Perfect Pearls is just the Ranger brand. This one is from Color Art. It's called Primary Elements. They have a couple different packages. But I keep these separate because I use these a lot of times. You can, like I said, mix these kind of like brush them with water and watch them activate. And that's pretty cool. So you can see how much vibrant they are on black paper. Because then all that light hits the mica and it, it really shines. Yes, that's what I was thinking, Melody, Pearl X. Um, those are bigger jars, but I know a lot of people use those as well. Thank you, Melody. And for those of you who are new to my channel, thank you. I think we are only nine away. Nine away from 14,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. That's just crazy to me. Hi, Dee Dee. So there you can see same effect using the primary elements. Just want to give you guys a couple different ideas on to use those perfect pearls. Get them out of the drawers, out of the closet. And if you don't have perfect pearls, the opal polishes are pretty cool. They'll do the same effect. Can't use the opal polishes with stamping, though. Like, if you wanted to stamp like that, you can't do that. What? Oh, thank you, Kiki. So just some different ways of using up what you have, using some embossing folders. Makes it really fun and simple, all the different colors of the mica powders. 
See, then I could go back in and um, cover that. I saw that, Kiki. Thank you for handling that. Kiki's on top of it. That's my girl. Best, best little sister ever. To be careful how I phrase that. <laughs> That's all I got. So I just wanted to show you guys. Yeah, there's a couple of sales going on in the stores right now. So if you get a chance, you can run over to Michael's and grab the mermaid ribbon. $5 a roll is a steal. And um, look at how pretty this is. And if you're into foiling, there is hot foil on sale at Joann's. Hot foil is different from toner foil. Toner foil is mink foil two different types of foiling systems check out my foiling videos if you're not sure what the difference is but don't buy the wrong foil um, several people have commented that they bought the wrong foil so you want to make sure you have the right foiling systems uh, new stamp sets coming out from not too shabby shop I made a couple cards you guys will see this week and next week for kitchen sink stamps using the bunnies and yes, I will link everything I used today just playing around with the Perfect Pearls and the Opal Polishes for you guys. I will put everything down in the description once we are done. And if you have any questions, comment down below. And if you need to purchase any kind of Stampin' Up! products during Celebration, I will put my Stampin' Up! link on there for you as well. I think I am 130 I think it was like $134 shy of getting this quarter's minimums. And I know everybody spent so much money at Christmas. I get it. Don't feel obligated. And if you have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, please use your Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I would hate to take credit from someone else. But if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you want to order some stuff, we do have a celebration going on right now where you get free stuff if you spend $50 or $100, which is cool. Thanks, Candace. That's all I got. I just wanted to pop in and say hi to everybody and hope that everybody's having a great Sunday. It was warm enough today that I did uh, um, take the car and go get the car wash. So that was kind of cool. Uh, deadline is March. We're in a new quarter. So January, February. So by the end of March. By the end of, the Mar end of March for Stampin' Up! It's every quarter. That's a long time away, Leah says. For those of you who ask, what do I do with the silica gel? I put it in my, my powders like this, so that way they don't get moisture. Keep my powders, my embossing powders. You get these in your shoes and things like that. Um, sometimes they come in like purses and stuff. Speaking of purses, not to brag. I'm really not bragging. Um, I bought, I splurged on myself and bought myself my very first Louis Vuitton bag. I cannot believe it that I spent the money on a name brand purse, but I love it. I love it so much. I don't want to use it. <laughs> I put it in the closet, <laughs> but my two sisters enabled and pushed me and said, it's time. And I was due for a big girl purse. Um, and I'm glad they did because it is very, very pretty. All right, guys, I'm going to put Miss Leah to bed. What? what? It's bedtime. What time is it? Oh, yeah, it's 9 o'clock. Time for bed. Right, Candace? I don't have a king, so I have to take care of myself. I have a prince and a princess. Um, yes. So, and I don't, if you ask my sister, she'll tell, Kiki will tell you, I do not have, like, name brand shoes clothes purses i do not have your typical woman's closet i have like very practical <laughs> clothes um she has a million shoes that she doesn't even wear yeah i have dress shoes that i don't wear but they're they're all like work related like i, I name brands are not a thing that i do um you know obviously i want my kids to to look well so my son does have some name brand sneakers but he's at that age but leah's very good she doesn't really care if it's name brand or not she's a good kid so for me to actually go out and buy something for myself like that and splurge 
It's very rare. Very, very rare. I have a mom closet. Yes. That's a great way of putting it. <laughs> Hi, Stacy. All right. Again, if you guys have any questions, post them down below. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up so I know to do more videos like this for you guys. And if you're not a subscriber, we're only nine away from 14,000 subscribers. So please click the little bubble that's going to come up in the right hand corner and then click the little bell and it will no let you have notifications whenever I post a new video or I go live. And I appreciate every single one of you. Thanks, guys. Keep on stamping. Bye-bye.